Hey guys. Okay. Okay. I'll succumb to the pressure. Every other gaming channel and it worth its salt is doing an E3 2018 predictions, guesses, what we want, blah 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 kind of video. And considering every year that I've had this channel, I have done one of those kinds of videos. I figure, well, you may as well get it done. Otherwise, people are going to go, why didn't you do one? Although there'll be just as many people going, why did you bother to do one? You can't win. Right, so let's kick it off, shall we? Let's see, where will we start? Ubisoft! They're always a good place to start. I like me an Ubisoft game or two. I've played a lot of Ubisoft actually this year alone. Um, so, I uh, definitely think they'll put in expansion packs for some of their popular things. You know, there'll be something for For Honor, there'll be something for Ghost Recon Wildlands, probably something for The Crew. Is The Crew? No, wait, The Crew's EA, isn't it? Sorry. Blah. <laughs> Uh, whatever racing game, you know, I'm sure they have a racing game and I'm sure they'll get something for it. Anyway, you know, um, I don't think Aisha Tyler is ever coming back, uh, regrettably. I personally liked her. I know she got a lot of hate, but I liked her. But I think she's doing really, really well on, cri on um, Criminal Minds. And because uh, that is a really good show. And she does a really good job on it, so yeah. I think we're not getting her back. So, I think it's de definitely going to take the same sort of shape as previous years. Um, will we get Division 2? That's of course one of the big questions about, you know, Ubisoft at E3 2018. Will we get Division 2? I think we will. I think they'll be very cagey. I don't think we'll get that much. I think there'll be like a logo a little bit of pre-rendered sequence, but I think gameplay, probably not so much. They'll hold that for a later date. They'll probably do like an idea in first or something, and then we'll see some gameplay. Because I think, considering how the division looked when it was first revealed at E3, and how it looked when it came out, all the, sh all the cries of, oh, it's a downgrade, came, you know. And Ubisoft has had that nonsense before, like with the first Watch Dogs game. Oh, it's a downgrade. Everything's always, oh, it's a downgrade. Oh, blah, blah. It's like, no, games change over time, guys. You know, they're an iterative medium. And just because it looks one way at one point doesn't mean it's going to continue looking that way at every point post that. That's just life. Anyway, so... um. I'd like to think there's going to be a couple more VR titles. I don't think we'll see any more uh, rabbits. I think we will get another sort of... Not so much a dev diary, but I don't think we'll get any gameplay. But I think we'll get another sort of vertical slice of uh, Beyond Good and Evil. You know, this well, Beyond Good and Evil 2. So I think we're definitely going to get a wee bit more of that. Because we just got that video in the now. And I think that's to whet our appetites for E3. Um, there'll be all the usual sort of, you know, Ubisoft gubbins and, you know, bits of this and bits of that. So I think it's going to be a relatively standard year. I don't think there's going to be anything remarkable. You know, there'll, there'll be a couple of things that stand out, obviously. But I don't think there's going to be anything particularly earth-shattering. Will they show off another Assassin's Creed? That is indeed a question. I would personally say no. Considering they've, dis they've more or less signaled their intention to do Assassin's Creed every other year, and we just got Origins, which, by the way, I'm playing right now and very much enjoying. Um, yeah, so that thing that wraps it up for Ubisoft. EA. What's EA going to do? EA. Let's have a word, shall we, EA? The last three years, your conference has been boring. Dear God, it's been dull. I mean, yeah, they show off enough games. I mean, 
where last year they showed that get out thing, you know, the two player thingy, and you know, various franchises and Star Wars. <coughs> oh God, Star Wars, please. Yeah, you know, let's take an established franchise and then let's completely make an absolute stinking mess here. How do you mess up Star Wars? How do you mess up Star Wars? <laughs> EA messes up Star Wars. Dear God. Ridiculous state of affairs. So, um, you know, there's going to hopefully be a couple of new things out there. We need some new ideas. Maybe a new Fight Night game. Boxing fans have, you know, boxing fans have been wanting a boxing game for years. And to best of my knowledge, there's not really been that much boxing games this gen. Correct me if I'm wrong. Typey, typey down below. Um, I think a lot of the usual stuff will be there. Will we see more of Anthem is the big question. I think we will. I don't think it'll be gameplay. Or if it will, it'll be a little bit of gameplay tacked on the end of a pre-rendered sequence. So it'll be like... Here's blah, 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 blah. And then there'll be a little bit of gameplay on the end. Um, I think what they need to do, though, is be less blokes in suits talking on stages. You know? They need a format shift on that. They really, really do. Because if they want to hold an audience for as long as E3 goes for you know, as long as EA go for it, EA... They go a long time. I mean, they can go like 90 minutes. I've seen them sometimes 100 minutes. I need someone, I think it was about 120 minutes. It's like, oh my God, this is going forever. It's like, seriously, EA, you need to do a lot more cutting to the chase, you know. They're not to be all completely scripted, but I think you need to have a little bit more of a focus about what's being said and who's saying it. And if you are going to have, like, you know, people who are, like, big in the community from YouTube or Twitch or whatever, then you need to have an idea of what they're going to say, and they need to have an idea of what they're going to say. Because, yeah, last year wasn't good in that respect, let's face it. But I think there'll be enough stuff, and there'll be interesting titles, and, you know, there'll probably be another version of another NBA game or something. You know, there'll be, you know, their usual offerings. A couple of new things. But I think it's going to be fairly standard. But they have to change the format. Because I don't know if I can sit for another EA conference. I really don't know if I can. It's like matchsticks. <laughs> Please. It's ridiculous. Uh, what else? Bethesda. Bethesda gonna do what Bethesda gonna do, man. Seriously, them guys is crazy. They, it's like, um, I think they've pushed out all the VR efforts they can, because they've already pushed out a Doom VR, a Fallout 4 VR, and, an El and a Skyrim VR. So, they're gonna have to actually come at us with something new. And I don't think Dishonored really hit it. I really don't. You know, it, it sung a lot of the right notes, but I don't think Dishonored really had it. And, you know, there's been some other things that have come from Bethesda that have just not had the punch, and they need a big, punchy title. I also think they're going to do more mobile work. I would definitely think that's coming. There's definitely going to be more stuff for them in the mobile space. Yeah, so get ready for games for your tablet and your phone from from Bethesda as far as actual proper console games go though I don't think we'll get lots of new stuff I think we'll get one new thing now will it be a title that they're still working on or will they do that Bethesda magic of uh, well we've been working on this in secret for the last three years we haven't told any of you about it and here it is and it we get this amazing thing that God knows what it's going to be. And then Bethesda, nutcases that they are, beautiful nutcases that they are, go, and um, it's out next week. 
for something like that. You know, like in October or something. You know, it's like remember when they did that with Fallout? How we were all like, hmm? that was amazing. That was awesome. It was something that the games industry needs more of. I mean, these long drawn out sequences of when we're eventually getting a thing is incredibly wearing. And you run the hype cycle down. How long do you expect to run hype for? Games companies, seriously. People have got limited time. You know, we can't all be following the development of a game for three years. Ah, ridiculous. So I think they will come out with at least one new thing. I reckon it'll be a stonker. It'd be something we've forgotten about, or something even maybe completely brand new, or at least a new concept, or something that they have done before, but in a new way. But whatever it is, there'll be a new thing. God knows what it'll be, because you just can't guess on Bethesda. They're just too random. You know? Um, let's see, what else? Nintendo, of course, they'll do a direct. They always do a direct. Now, that's what they do. Uh... I don't think they'll announce much in the way of anything new. I think they'll probably put out a couple more. They'll announce some more Labo kits. They'll probably put out an expansion pack to like Mario Odyssey. You know. They'll probably fiddle with the edges of a couple of things. You know, they'll tell you about a couple of new games. But, you know, like, we're talking like small sort of, you know, party games for the Switch. I don't think there'll be anything major. Because. Nintendo does, I don't think they really care anything more about E3. I think E3 for them is almost irrelevant now. Um, so yeah, I've, you know, they might use this opportunity to say, hey, we're doing another mini console. Because we got a, we got a NES, we got a SNES. Now, do we get an NES? Do we get a game a mini GameCube or a mini N sixty four? Now a GameCube could be interesting because you know a mini GameCube is actually it's quite it was you know it's that that cube structure you get a lot of memory in that sucker even at the size of mini consoles usually run to. So like if it maintains a similar form factor to the other mini consoles. I think there's going to be a good bit more space to actually cram more memory into it. And that way, I think they'll have a good, like, 40 titles. And there'll be stuff there that you've forgotten about and, you know, things that make you go mental. So I think, yeah, that's probably the thrust of what Nintendo will do come E3. You know? Definitely think there'll be more Labo stuff, like I said, though. Because, yeah, I think they're going to push that hard. <clears throat> and uh, I like to think they'll also talk about, you know, a pr might even talk about an actual proper store, an e store for the Nint for Nintendo because it they those guys need it. Just that's truth. They just need it. Um, Microsoft, 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 Microsoft. What are you gonna do, guys? I'm worried about you. I'm a PlayStation guy, but I love all gaming. And I'm worried about you, Microsoft. You've put out this beefy machine with a buttload of power, you know? And it, it is a powerful machine. Let's not beat it around the bush. The Xbox One X is an absolute beast. But are you really using its potential? Because... As much as, you know, you've got the backwards compatibility issue and it has to be said the new version of the original SSX does look pretty sweet. It's like, is that what people are really buying an Xbox One X for? You know, this n super near to 4K, sometimes actual 4K machine. Is that really the focus? Backwards compatible games. I mean, don't get me wrong, backwards compatible is lovely. I mean, as a PlayStation guy, I was used to having that on my PS2 and on my PS3, which I still have, my 60 gigger, you know? 
I love my 60 giga PS3. You know, I've got a 320 drive in it, she still runs, it's all grand. Backwards compatibility is cool. However, you know, you can't run a next gen system, you know, the, net, the current gen system on this now. You know, you need more. There needs to be other things happening, you know. And either third party exclusives or first party. I mean, you do have some, you know, some studios in your back pocket, Microsoft. You really need to use them, guys, because, you know, in in the YouTube space, at very least, you're getting absolutely murdered. It's not a good look for you. It really isn't. I mean, you've got your pro, you've got your pro controller. That's lovely. You've got your 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 Uber system. That's lovely. You've got your Xbox One S, which is, you know, a, a nice way of bumping it up a bit without going too crazy. In case you can't, you get a little bit extra power. The games, you know, the games pass thing, where like you know, ten quid a month gets you everything forever, as long as you keep pumping in the ten quid a month. A great idea, you know. You've got some promising things, but hot and cold running Christ Microsoft, you need some games, okay. You need games, and I'm not talking about you know like let like how we went with Tomb Raider. You know, it's like, uh, this is a uh, console exclusive for about eight months. <laughs> oh, God. You know, eight to ten, eight to twelve months of console exclusivity is not exclusive. It's timed exclusive. We've, me and many other YouTubers have spoken on this, Microsoft. It's not good enough. You have vast resources. And you have a name to uphold. And quite frankly, it's not looking good. Now, you know, and it, please, 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 right? Don't do another Halo, another, um, what would you call it, Forza. Steer away from that. Your, your audience is seeing the same game, just prettier. Do something new. I mean, you had something with Scalebound. And, um, well, Scalebound. Yeah. That didn't pan out, did it? And there's been other things, and they didn't pan out. You need something. I mean, a couple of years ago, you brought HoloLens on, and you showed that with, even though it was just running like uh, Minecraft, it was up. And since then... What have you done with HoloLens? Nothing. You've made an, a 4K version of Minecraft. Okay. You do you, Microsoft. All I'm saying is, look, you're going to fire it with the big guns this year. Because, okay, look, you're not going to catch Sony. It's just not going to happen. But, you have sold, you know, like... Good number of systems. This Sony sold a stupidly awesome number of systems. That's the truth, you know. You have sold a good number of systems. You need to make your your user base feel like they're actually doing something with it and getting somewhere with it. You know, it's just a thing you've got to do. So I really hope you do, Microsoft. I really hope you come out with like three or four. Epic titles, two of which are made by you, two of which are made by somebody else, and they're just for you and your user base. I think that would be really lovely because you need that. Now, yes, yeah, okay, you've got State of Decay 2 coming, but come on. State of Decay 2 doesn't look all that much different from State of Decay 1, and yet that trailer, you know, the, the one with the, the, the bridge and the big zombie and car doors smacking that it doesn't look as good as that does it it's it's a tricky and interesting time for you Microsoft I really really honestly deeply hope you can 
pull the rabbit out of the hat and come absolutely blasting with something big. And I'm not talking about apps, okay? I'm not talking about revisions to your UI. I'm talking about actual games, okay? Things that make the viewing audience go, oh my god, I must sell one of my kidneys so I can buy this game now. And it has to be a game that's coming out within a year, okay, or less, because too much of this, Microsoft is showing off a game at E3, and either it doesn't come out, or it doesn't come out for a further three years. There are not three years left in this generation. I personally predict there to be two years left in this generation. Two. So you need to get a wriggle on. Right. Now for the big Angelata. This the the stuff I know the best, so that's why I save it for last. Sony. What are Sony gonna do? Okay, so Sony have pioneered the the sort of more cinematic showcase, you know. Less blether and more actual sort of like, you know, here's what we got. <laughs> You know, blah, trailer, blah, other trailer, blah, gameplay, you know, hit after hit after hit. I mean, it's like, uh, so obviously they're going to like double down on some of the things they've spoken about. Concrete Genie, Ghost of Tsushima, um, Death Stranding, um, Days Gone, you know, they're going to pump those games up they're going to go look at this here we go wow now we're in the swing and then the i reckon they're going to announce they won't show it but they'll announce a dlc pack for god of war and then they'll show what's in the pack at psx um i reckon they're gonna give us a little bit of details about what they're doing with playstation plus subscription considering in another 11 months, is that 11 months or is, it, or is it 10? 10, 11 months anyway, we are losing the PS3 games and the PlayStation Vita games. And I think this is going to be where they talk about, you know, the beginning to fade off the support for Vita and for PS3. But let's face it, the PS3. Was it now like a 12 year old system or something? It's got to be in that ballpark. I mean, wow. It's a it's a long lived system. And we all know why it lives so long. Because of the financial crisis. If it hadn't been for the financial crisis, you know, we would have gotten a PS4 but two, three years earlier. But it wouldn't have the power it has now. But that's, you know, same for the Xbox. We didn't get that because of the financial crisis. What else are we going to see? Well, obviously, I think they're going to show us actual proper gameplay from Spider-Man to get you hyped for September. Um, I like to think they're probably going to... They'll obviously pat themselves on the back for Detroit Become Human because that's going to be awesome. I've got my copy pre-ordered. <laughs> Um, dreams. You have to. You must. You deeply have to give us a date for dreams. Seriously, dreams has been in development since before the PS4 was on shop shelves. Okay. You stood on that stage, Media Molecule, at the New York event. All right. And you fiddled with virtual clay with two move sticks, two years, building this heed uh, out of virtual clay. And then that is what ended up becoming Dreams. And Dreams, you've been showing it and showing it and showing it. And it just needs, it deeply has to happen already. I mean, Lord knows how you've kept the hype train running this long since PSX. But seriously, I love the fact that you're so vocal on Twitter and you're always like, 
you know, showing us things for the audience and you do your little, you know, you've been doing your Twitch streams where you show us development stuff and that. And that's all great. But we need a game. We need a game. Okay. People are going to start to go, well, I guess dreams is no hat then. A game, it looked like a nice idea. That's what's going to happen unless you pull your finger out. you got to pull the trigger of Media Molecule. Seriously. Sony, pump them some cash. Do something. Right. Uh, what else could Sony be doing? Well, one, I think they, they're they definitely going to, like I said, announce a cut support for Vita and Free. I think they will actually, you know, they won't say the words, the Vita is dead. But they'll be like, uh, you know, in the cu uh, over the coming financial year, uh, we will begin to wrap uh, software s releases for PlayStation Vita, and by su by summer next by summer twenty nineteen, uh, there will be no more PlayStation Three titles actually coming out. There'll be no more PlayStation Three games being made. You know that's it. That's your lot. It's now a, it's now set to be a retro system, and. Uh, once that happens, yeah, then it's full steam ahead and I think they'll put more of their dev time and dev money into PlayStation 5. Now, we're not going to hear jack all about PlayStation 5. Don't believe that for a minute. Right, that system is two years away. We might hear about it in passing at next year's E3, but as far as getting any kind of solid information now or in a month from now forget it forget it all right what else is sony gonna do i also i also believe personally now maybe this is my view being slightly colored because i am a strong proponent of vr and i love my psvr i think they're gonna like go hey he thought year one and year two of PSVR was interesting. You know, like uh, year one, we had like fifteen titles or whatever it was. And year two, we produced a further thirty titles or whatever it's been. I think it's been in that ballpark. It's like, uh, well, we're doing it again. You know, and they're going to really come in. And I think this is the year. Yes, this is the year where we finally finally get new move controllers or whatever the controller is going to be dedicated controllers for playstation vr because don't get me wrong i like my move controllers i've had them since like uh since the ps3 days i mean i had i've still got my move i've still got my nav i've still got my shark here because well i'm not gonna get it for them, like 50 pence online please uh and I had two for the fight lights out. And I love that game. Brilliant bloody game. And uh, so I think they're going to have to give us a new control. You know, or could some kind of control sticks for PlayStation VR. It has to happen because, you know, as nice as the move is. I don't think it's accurate enough anymore. Yes, it's got some millimeter tracking, and it's got what's it six Excel six maybe eight accelerometers inside the actual controllers. It's nine year old tech. You know, it's not new anymore. It's far from it, and is it really doing enough for? The capabilities of VR. I was pushing it forward enough. Now I think there's obviously there's going to be developments in VR's UI and stuff, but I don't think that's what you bring out at E3. But I do think they'll say right. I don't. I think there'll not so much be a price cut, but I think there'll be like a special offer. You know, like uh, there'll be more. They'll announce a couple of bundles. So yeah, that's I think that's a thing. Definitely more bundles. And what else? Oh, what else would they do? Let's see. 
I like to think there's going to be talk of... Did I say Concrete Genie? I like to think they're going to do something with Concrete Genie. And... I think they might talk, possibly, about a, a Crash Team Racing. That would be kind of fun. That, admittedly, now that's a bit out there. That's me sort of like hoping against hope, because let's face it, Crash Team Racing, that was a family bucket of fun. Um, so we might get Crash Team Racing, but who's to say? It's a bit out there. But nonetheless, I think this year they might go a little less with such an elaborate stage show. I think they might bring the talking back a little bit. Because as much as it was great having all this visual stuff, sometimes you feel like you want somebody to give you a bit of information. Not too much. You know, like maybe minute, minute and a half on some titles, not all, just some. Going, hey, we've been working on this. This is this is this clever little thing we've done here, and see how it forms into that. And there's this lighting thing that's all kind of cool. Check this out and on the screen, and it's awesome. I think though the whole thing of like uh, you know having the smoke machines and the rest of it, it's an extravagance that admittedly E3 is extravagance okay but I think it doesn't pan well to the vast audience the vast audience of the people who are watching it from streaming services I mean you could just do it make out on some parts that there were bodies hanging from ropes for days gone but it's only like a couple of weeks later that we actually found out that some of those were actors and then some of the actors were actually vocalising and then sort of zombie groans, sorry, freaker groans. <laughs> it's like, uh, yeah. I would like to think there's also, on the subject of VR, I think there's also going to be more VR gun games to go along with the aim controller. I think that would be nice. I think there'll definitely be expansions to Rec Room and... Uh, I even like to think that they might reboot, reimagine, or reawaken, or whatever you want to use, PlayStation Home, but for PSVR. I mean, it won't look, exa it won't look like PlayStation Home looked like, but I think they'll do something very similar because, let's face it, End Dreams is terrible, and. As much as I enjoy Rec Room, it's a little bit kiddie looking. So something where we're walking about with fully customizable avatars that represent us or whatever one will look like. I think that's definitely going to be something that'll be kind of awesome. Uh, <coughs> let's see. So I think Sony are going to go absolutely nuts. I think they're really going to push the boat out because, you know, they've got the lead, they've got the software, they've got the hardware, and, uh, yeah, it basically, it's Sony's game now, it really is. Microsoft could do everything that I wanted them to do, but even with that, with all the exclusive titles coming from Sony, the next wee while. Yep. Just now. Yeah, I'll do it now. You know? I mean, there's like four massive games still yet to happen. And there's other stuff that's like uh, getting ready to happen the now. And the sales, I mean, what? Is it like 79 million units or something? Yeah. It's it's only Z3 to do as they please. But, as always, what do you think? What's your opinion? You know, do you have different ideas to me? You probably do. If you do, share them down below. Come to my PlayStation community. Contact me on Twitter. Whatever you like. I'm always here. Oh, and by the way, 
Uh, I've increased the range of designs on my red bubble store. So I have a wee gander. There's, there should be an annotation above me to the side like for my, uh, for my red bubble store. Go have a look. Maybe you'll see something you like. And of course it spreads his envelope name. Which is all good because you got to share that love, baby. <laughs> okay, guys. I have rambled on for like over half an hour. But, you know, there's a lot to cover when it comes to E3. And I've got the time off. So, hopefully. Well, at least I've asked for the time off. So, hopefully. I'll be able to make a few videos of impressions from the conference. After the conference about what I saw. And uh, maybe, maybe... Me, Wingy and Cycle and Demon can come together and do a, you know, do a state of gaming pot, a reaction to E3 podcast. That would be lovely. It'd be a good thing because it's been far too long since State of Gaming's done a podcast. Love you, Wingy and Cycle. You're the bros. Um, okay, guys. Like I said, I'm coming close to 40 minutes here, so I'm going to shut this down. So... As always, please remember to rate, favourite, comment, share and subscribe. And of course, as always, I... Nay bother.